Hey, how's it going? Today I want to go over how to build this uh, button that's inspired by Google Material Design 2. This video is made possible by my Patreon subscribers, Anders, Eric, John, Heather, Eric, and Spider Digital. Thank you so much for all of your support. All right, so I've got my new Webflow project here. There's one div under the body called page. This has a hundred viewport heights and just uh, flex center center so that we can see what we're working on. I'm going to start with a link block, drag that onto the page. And within that link block, I want some text. So just drag that right in there. I don't know what this one's doing. We'll get rid of that. And we're going to want one more div that's going to be our circle element. Okay, for this link block, let's give it some padding. Just do one rem all around. And how come my text is not in there? Oh, this is the div. Okay, so we're good. And then on the link block, we're going to do no underline. And we will set the, let's set the color to white. And we'll set the background to something colorful. Try that. I'm also going to give it some rounded corners. And that should be good for that. Now this, we'll call this circle. This we want to make sure it's absolute. And since we're setting that to absolute, we'll set the parent to relative. And we'll just stick it at the top left here. I'm going to change this text to say button. And now the circle, we want this to be a perfect circle. So the way I'm going to do this is I want it to be larger than the button for sure. So we'll make its width 200% uh, of the circle. And then rather than setting a height to 200%, you'll see if we set that to 200%, it'll be two times the height of the button. I want a perfect circle. So I'm gonna set that on the padding top, right like this. So now we have a perfect square, 200, 200. And I'm gonna give that a background color of pure white, but we will bring this opacity down to something like 30%. And it's a full square right now, so let's add some border radius on that, 100 viewport width, so we're starting to get our circle here. Okay, let me give this button text, and I'll make it just a little bit bigger, just so we can see it, maybe capitalize. Sure, why not? Okay. I think that's all we're gonna need to do for this. Let's go ahead and get into the interaction design. I'm gonna add the interaction to this link block element here, element trigger. So we're gonna do two here. The first one we want is we want the circle to track our mouse while it's inside of the button. And the second interaction we'll do is the actual growth of the circle. So we wanna do mouse move over element interaction. We want to play mouse animation. And we don't need to do this on tablet, phone, or uh, portrait. And we'll set that on the class. And those settings are looking pretty good. Let's add mouse animation. We'll call this track mouse. And so at 0%, we want, let me um, give the body just a little bit of color here so we can see that, that circle moving. Something like that. Yeah. OK, back to our interaction. Now we're gonna select the circle and when that, when the mouse is all the way over here, since we're in the top left here, I should say, I think negative 50% on the x-axis. Yep, and that'll put the middle of the circle on the x-axis right where we want it. And then when we're 100% over, we just want that to be at 0%, right? Uh, because our circle is 200% the width of the parent, of which is the button element. So that's good for X. Now let's deal with Y. Why we want the middle of the circle to be negative 50%. So very similar to the X direction there. So that's middle of the circle. And now we don't want to translate it down to zero. You'll see if, if the end we put at 0%, it's going to come down too far. So it's actually just a quarter of what we're working on. So we'll do negative 25%. And now we'll see that it's tracking where we want it to go. Let's turn on live preview and see Yep, middle of the circle is tracking our mouse, so that's great. And then we come out, it snaps back to the center, and that's fine. So save that. I don't know, up this to 80% or something. And that should be good with the tracking of the mouse. Let's just come into preview. Looking good. Okay, and now we're going to do our mouse click. And we're going to be on first click. We're going to start an animation. We don't need tablet. Well, actually, let's keep this one on. Hmm. Um, trying to think if I want to actually add this on tablet or phone or not. Let's keep it on for the other one. And we're good to go there. So we'll keep it on on all of them. Set this to class. And now let's add our animation. 
So this is circle grow. Now we're going to start with our initial styles. And the initial style we want is a scale of zero. This is going to make sure that there's actually zero size. And we'll set that as initial state. And then also opacity initial state is going to be 100%. We're not going to see it because the scale is at zero. And then once we click, we want to scale up to one. And that's going to take it to that 200% width and height that we specified already. And we'll set the opacity to zero. So we want that to go to zero while that's all happening. Uh, this preview's not work, really working too well, but we should be able to see it. And then we need to reset the scale and opacity too. So we'll set the scale back to, what was it, zero. And the opacity to 100%. And these are both going to happen in zero time. So duration set to zero. And let's save that and see what we get. Great, so we're getting exactly what we want to see, but we need to hide overflow. So on the link block, just set that to hidden. And now we get exactly what we're looking for. You could publish this. And let's just make a copy of it to make sure that it works on two. And I'm just going to give this a bottom margin just for fun. Yep, and since we set it to class, it's working on both of those. I might go over, if you like this uh, style of button, let me know, and I'll go over custom code to make it happen uh, so that this thing doesn't follow and that we can reset the animation if the user is clicking a bunch, depending on what you're working on. Maybe you have a game or something that you want them to play. Anyways, uh, links to any of the code or whatever I talked about in this video resources will be below, and uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.